Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, we're going to learn about dividing rational numbers. That's also our objective today. We will divide rational numbers. The question I would like you thinking about as we go through the lesson is how are dividing rational numbers and dividing integers similar? So I'm going to ask you to draw upon your knowledge of when you learn to divide integers. Let's review division. Quotient is the answer to a division problem. So if you divide two values, the answer you get is also called the quotient. If you're asked to find the quotient, you're being asked to divide. Remembering that if we have this rational value, negative 10 fifths, that is the same as saying negative 10 divided by 5, reminding you that a fraction bar is also a division symbol. If we have negative 12 over 6, or negative 12 divided by 6, negative 12 6, that is the same as if we put the negative sign with the denominator. So if I have one negative sign and it's in the numerator, the entire rational value is negative. If I have one negative sign and it's in the denominator, the entire rational value is also negative. And that's also the same as if you put the negative sign next to the fraction. So remember, as long as there's only one negative sign, you have a negative value. Let's review the division properties. The division property of zero states that any value divided by zero will have an undefined quotient, just as we learned with integers. So a, any number a, divided by zero is undefined. Thinking about division as dividing into groups, if you have something, right, a number a, you cannot divide that into zero groups. The smallest group you can have is one. Negative one-third, our rational number, divided by zero is undefined. Negative 7.36 divided by zero is undefined. So all rational numbers, which include our integers and our whole numbers, when you divide by zero, it's undefined. The identity property of division states that any value divided by 1 will be equal to itself. So any number a divided by 1 is equal to a. Negative 1 eighth divided by 1, negative 1 eighth is the quotient. Negative 4.9 divided by 1 is equal to negative 4.9. So you can see that our property of 0 and our identity property are the same for integers as they are for rational numbers. Let's review dividing rational numbers with the same sign. The same sign rule. Using the same rules as we did with integers, rational numbers with the same sign will have a positive quotient when divided. So if we have a positive value divided by a positive value, it will equal a positive number. If we have a negative value divided by a negative value, it will equal a positive. So same sign, both positive, positive quotient. Same sign, both negative, positive quotient. So now we've learned these rules first with integers, but now I can tell you that for rational numbers, any time you are multiplying or dividing the same sign, you will have a positive product or a positive quotient. Today, we're going to focus on division. Let's talk about dividing rational numbers with different signs. The different signs rule is a, states that using the same rules as we did with integers, rational numbers with different signs will have a negative quotient when divided. So if we have a positive value divided by a negative value, it equals a negative quotient. If we have a negative value divided by a positive value, negative quotient. Two different signs, positive and negative. Two different signs, negative and positive. I have a negative quotient. Let's practice with fractions. We're going to find the quotient. So I have a division problem, but I'm going to make a plan before I go and divide. I'm going to first think. I have a negative divided by a positive. I have two different signs, 
Therefore, I know my plan is my quotient is going to be negative. So now I can go ahead and divide and not have to worry about my negative sign because I've made a plan. I know that I need a negative sign in my quotient. Going back to dividing fractions, we're going to keep, change, flip. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to keep negative one third, change division to multiplication, and the reciprocal of two sevenths is seven halves. Now we just follow our multiplication rules. I'm going to set this up to multiply the numerators, one times seven, and multiply the denominators, three times two. So one times seven is seven, and three times two is six, and I have my negative sign from my plan. My quotient is negative seven sixths. Let's try the second one. I'm going to make my plan. I have a negative divided by a negative. Notice I didn't even say what the values were. It doesn't matter. I'm looking at their signs. Same sign, both negative. My quotient is going to be positive. Now I can come back up to my problem and I'm going to keep two thirds and multiply by the reciprocal. Notice I dropped the negative signs because I don't need them. I've already noted my quotient's going to be positive. Let's multiply our numerators, multiply our denominators. Two times two is four over three times one is three. My quotient is positive four thirds. Your turn. I would like you to pause now, solve and find the quotient. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. Let's check your work. So I'm going to make a plan. I have a negative divided by a negative. Same sign, positive quotient. Now we're ready to rewrite it to multiplication. So I'm going to keep one fifth, change to multiply, and the reciprocal of negative of seven fourths is four sevenths. Notice I dropped the negative signs because I've made my plan. Let's multiply our numerators, multiply our denominators. One times four is four. Five times seven is 35. My quotient is positive four thirty-fifths. Our second one. I'm going to first look. I have a negative divided by a positive. Two different signs means negative quotient. So I'm going to keep the first fraction, change to multiply, and the reciprocal is 5 over 1. Now let's multiply our numerators and multiply our denominators. 8 times 5 is 40. Ooh, I forgot. Let's simplify. So you could do 40 over 5, and then you would have to say 40 divided by 5 is 8. Or you could have noticed I have to simplify. Both the numerator and the denominator have a common factor of 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, leaving me negative 8. 8 times 1 all over 1 times 1. Again, you could have multiplied and said 8 times 5 over 5, which is 40 divided by 5, and it's 8 with a negative quotient. Let's practice with our decimals. We're going to do the same thing, though. We're going to make a plan. I have a negative divided by a positive. Different signs, negative quotient. Now we're going to set up long division. So we have 6.8 divided by 3.4. Now we need to move our decimal point. We have to move it to the right one so that we have a whole value. So if I move it to the right one, I have to move it to the right one. So that tells me I have 68 divided by 34, and my decimal will be right here if I need it. 34 goes into 68 twice. 2 times 34 is 68 and I have zero as a remainder. So my answer to this problem is negative two. Don't forget your negative sign. Our second problem, I'm gonna set this up, but I'm gonna make a plan first. I have a negative divided by a negative, so I'm dividing same sign, which means I'm gonna have a positive quotient. Now I'm ready to set this up. I have 0 0.84 divided by 2.8. 
when I move the decimal point one to make this a whole number here, I have to move the decimal point here one space. So it's going to look like this. Bring up the decimal point. 28 doesn't go into eight, so I can have my zero and my decimal point. So now I'm looking to see how many times 28 goes into 84, and that goes in three times. Three times 28 is exactly 84, so I have a zero remainder, and my answer is gonna be positive 0 0.3. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and pause, find the quotient, and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. Let's make our plan. I have a negative divided by a negative, which tells me I have a positive quotient because they have the same sign. Setting up my long division, I'm gonna have 16.9 divided by 1.3. I need to move this decimal one to the right because I moved the thir made this 13, moving it one to the right. I have to move this to the other side of nine. 13 goes into 16 once. One times 13 is 13. 16 subtract 13 is three. Bring down your nine. 13 goes into 39 three times. Three times 13 is 39. And I have a remainder of zero. So my quotient is positive 13. Now let's find the quotient of the second. I have a negative divided by a positive. Different signs, negative quotient. Make your plan. Let's set this up. 7.2 divided by 0 0.24. I need to move the decimal point two spaces to the right, which means I'm gonna need to add a zero, and there's my decimal point. So I moved this decimal two to get a whole number. I need to move this decimal point also two. So I need to add my zero. So now I'm going to divide. 24 goes into 72 three times. Three times 24 is 72. I have a remainder of zero. So if I brought down a zero here, I know that it would go in zero times. So my answer is negative 30. The quotient is negative 30. Don't forget to add the zero in here, your decimal point, all the digits need to get filled in. Let's review our rules for dividing rational numbers. So if we're dividing with the same signs, we have two rules. Same sign, both positive, positive quotient. Both negative, same sign, positive quotient. And then we have dividing with different signs, and we again have two rules. If it's a positive divided by a negative, my quotient's negative because they're different. A negative divided by a positive has a negative quotient because they're different. Same sign, positive quotient, different signs, negative quotient. Thank you for joining me today and learning about dividing rational numbers. I hope you did some good practice today and you learned some new rules and understand that rational numbers have the same rules as integers when we divide. And that's what we have at The Magic of Math, where we are mastering math one video at a time. Thanks for joining me today. Please subscribe or leave a comment and a thumbs up, and I'll hope to see you back. Have a great day.